What's going on guys? It's Tang with a statue review of Velvet and Cornelius from Odin's Sphere, which is a vanillaware game that came out a while back. I said I was going to review it, so, you know, it's better late than never, so we're going to take a look at it, and uh, without further ado, let's take a closer look. As you can see, the Atlas mascot Jack Frost is on the top corner, since Atlas is on publishing duty for the game. On this side, we get a close-up look at Velvet. The back has a combined shot with close-ups of the two characters, with Cornelius on the next one. I actually like the box. It's black with a very nice border design consisting of leaves, and it's kind of something you see in the actual game. Uh, it's a vanilla wear staple. You even see it in uh, Dragon's Crown, but uh, enough about boxes. On to opening. Okay, so first off is the base. Actually, pretty elaborate compared to those simple plain bases. There's some foliage and raised earth that surrounds the pillar, almost as if a battle pushed it over and the earth's erupting from being disturbed. I have to note, the color is actually pretty vibrant, even though it has a barren desert landscape feel. The pillar in the middle gives it a little weight, which is really neat considering the amount of stuff that's going to go on it. Next up is Velvet herself in a very active pose, as if she was running and then peeking behind her. The details on her are actually pretty good. Her clothing emphasizes her gypsy background, and the red cloak gives off a red riding hood feel to her. The gold on her head wrap and below her breasts accents well against the black clothing and her fair skin. And her leggings have a purple tint near her knees and ankles, which is Really nice touch! That's It makes it so shiny! You may also notice her skin-tight top revealing a little extra <laughs> around her chest. And, uh, you know, she's also wearing a very short top which reveals her midriff. Her attire doesn't leave much to the imagination. You can even see under her skirt that booty though. And in front... <laughs> Jesus Christ! She's wearing gold panties! I think. Right, moving on. You'll notice her skirt can move slightly. No, it doesn't mean you can take it off. Think perverts. It's for something else. I'll get to that in a bit, but uh, last up is her face. It's a calm, deadpan expression, which is a little disappointing. The thing is, is that she looks like that in game. I think it's because her eyes look like they're half closed, which makes it seem like she's uninterested in stuff. In fact, she has that look in a lot of her promotional images. Finally, she has her cipher chains, which are weapons with crystals attached to them. The chains are slightly bendable, the crystals are pointy, so be careful with your eyes and don't point them at people's face. I mean, they're plastic chains. Nothing much to it. Next up is Cornelius, who is a puka warrior. He may as well be a rabbit warrior. But, not much to it. He is a third of velvet size. He's in a battle stance and he's dressed for it. His gauntlets have a little damaged look to it, and um, you can just tell he's ready to fight. If you're wondering, the peg became stuck when I tried putting him on the base for the first time. His cypher sword is a uh, rather simple blue see-through, as usual, but it gets the job done. Interesting to note is that it's almost taller than him. So you ready for assembly? I sure am. Let's do Cornelius first. The sword and handle can be pulled apart and you just place them in Cornelius's hand like so. Line it up with the hole and uh, you should be good. You can rotate the sword if you want. Uh, to be competent and uh, smart, we're gonna put the sharp edge away from the face because you know you don't you don't put the edge towards your face because if someone knocks it into your face, you're gonna get hurt. 
The pig goes into the pedestal, uh, which is now in his leg. So for those who have a new one, the peg will be in the pillar. So be careful when you're putting it on. And that it doesn't get stuck at an angle, which is what mine is now. So I was I was dumb. Uh, and now I am paying the price. I can't get it out. So if I ever store it, it's uh, going to be a problem. Velvet and her chains is a little tricky. The coiled part of the chain has to go around her hand, which then needs to coil around her wrist near her waist. This is uh, when the movable skirt comes in handy. The other end goes into her outstretched hand. You can see I'm having some trouble. Okay, so her feet goes onto the peg that's on top of the rubble ground. Be careful this time. But uh, this one is a little bit easier, just slides right in. Hmm, not too tight. Wow. I like it. It does have problems, I'll admit. Velvet is the centerpiece, but Cornelius makes my eye stray away from her. The poses are also a bit awkward, depending on the angle. One character will be obscured no matter what, since the characters are facing away from each other. You won't get a good view of the both of them at the same time. To be honest though, I bought the statue mostly for Velvet, and that's what the statue is advertised as. It's a little bit silly to display it as a Cornelius piece, since if you do that, your eye will instantly stray to Velvet, because her presence is just much higher, and she's taller, and you know, you'll notice the red. But it does give you something to look at, regardless of the angle. It's just that Velvet is the centerpiece. I'll deal with the eyesore as long as the rest of the statue is good. Which it is. The paint job is really good. The characters are recognizable. Thank God for that. It isn't too big. 1-8 scale and running at 8 inches high. You'll need a 13 inch clear distance on a shelf due to all the accessories protruding out. Or you can just take it off, store those weapons but it'll look really bare bones. For the most part, I love it, and I just love it. It's Odin Sphere, I was hoping they have something related to it, so there's, you know, with all the tapestries and figures, this is a really good buy. I think I bought it for around 120, um, which, you know, I had to save money for that, uh, but it, it was a good purchase. I really love, I just love looking at it. Compared to my Hatsune Miku figure that I have, or statue, excuse me, it's this one's just dynamic. It's cool. There's stuff to look at. The material is great. Although I think it's the same material as Hatsune Miku, but it's it feels weighty. So yeah, I think at this point you probably missed out on her, but you can probably buy her on Amazon if you're lucky, and possibly eBay. Uh, but for the most part, it's like six months since I bought this thing. And it was worth every penny. So that's all I have to say on the matter. Thank you guys for watching. Please uh, please uh, leave a comment about what you think. And I'll be uh, playing some Odin Sphere if I have the time. Possibly not because I have school and school is a pain. But I will make sure to try to at least upload something. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll catch you guys on whatever I uh, decide to upload and do. So I'll catch you guys later. See ya.